thanks for coming in again. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about yield optimization, um, the current waterfall method versus um, the all-in auction. This is the new radical way of yield, apparently, optimizing yield. Neil, can you run us through these sort of two sort of uh, concepts, if you could, and maybe talk about a real-time example of the all-in auction? If you sure. Could. Sure. So you know, ad serving today is has its legacy in what you would just call a waterfall. Yeah, and RTB has created this essentially new way of looking at things that is based on an auction. Yeah. Uh, so we have a little bit of a conflict. These are, you know, an economist would call these mechanisms of how you sell something, and a mechanism is just how will you take an object and what is your methodology to sell it. Yeah. A waterfall in ad serving is generally a three-step process. The old school method. Sponsorship deals. Yeah. So any order that you strike with an advertiser that's on the basis of a buyout. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to come to your site and say, I want to buy the first five impressions for all of your users on the home page and I want to run a creative that's synchronized and I'm going to pay top dollar to reach this yeah. audience first. So sponsorship goes first. And then you have your direct sales. And the direct sales is generally a little more complex than sponsorship. It's about perhaps targeting collections of different placements on the website. Um, generally, there's a guarantee, but not always. And the guarantee comes in the form of, of you know, the deal has to fulfill this many impressions, you know, plus or minus some discrepancy. Yeah. And here's the price. And there's rate cards for this. There's sales teams for this. But this gets second cut. Sponsorship gets first cut. Direct gets second cut. And then you get into kind of indirect which is your networks yep, and this is you know an, an ssp essentially soliciting to uh ad nets rtb this emerging programmatic guaranteed and private marketplaces yeah etc <clears throat> so you know what's the problem here the problem is is that if if these prices collide Right? So if you just look at things in terms of a, of a demand curve, so here's the price and here's the frequency. This is just Econ 101, freshman, freshman economics. You can basically take all of your buys and chart them on a little chart like this. Mm -hmm. And one point is that anytime you're looking at a demand curve, an average price is the wrong thing to use. You need to essentially discretize this curve and look at a sequence of averages. Yeah. Because otherwise, you know, an average is for things that are normally distributed like that, not things that are exponentially distributed. So if if your direct curve looks like this, and your indirect curve, let me get the green to work. Your indirect curve looks like this, you know, roughly. So you have this impedance right here. So some percentage, this percentage of the indirect curve actually is competitive at higher prices, the direct curve. Mm. So you, you've got a problem here. In order for you to make the most money, which in this case is area under the curve, yeah. you need to harmonize these demand curves. So how and this makes it very difficult. Okay, so how do we harmonize this? Is this where the all-in auction comes in? Yep. So... Uh, just start with the auction. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's the auction. Uh, every buyer, the impression comes into the auction and mm. everyone has to bid on this basis. Mm. And you can still do d deals, you know, the, the, the previous talks we've had on the direct deals, you can, on the, on the deal ID, you can build a lot of this type of thing with direct, uh, with the deal ID, with OpenRTB in the auction. The first thing you do is you build yourself a bidder. Okay. Or, this, or use a bidder. Or use a bidder. And this isn't someone else's bidder. Yeah. Looking at someone else's orders. This is the kind of funny thing about this is these are your orders mm. as a publisher. These are orders that you've negotiated. You've had a conversation yeah. with someone. These are somebody else's orders that are just happening on your inventory. Yeah. So programmatic guaranteed and all the programmatic stuff is mm -hmm. really about taking control back over yeah. these orders. And that's what deal ID is about. So how does that work here? Well, you want to build a bidder that works for you as a publisher. Okay. This is the bidding technology that is responsible for running. They, 
these orders and running these orders, right? Sponsorship stuff needs a deal ID. Direct stuff only needs a deal ID if it's gonna be guaranteed or prioritized. So you build a bidder. The impressions are exposed to your bidder and you have algorithms that are going to bid back into your own inventory and their job is to execute these deals. And you may, you know, Europe is, is really, it's really popular to sell direct on a CPC basis, CPC algorithm. Mm -hmm. You might have a CPA algorithm. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., it's much more common to have a kind of a CPM algorithm. Yeah, you just, yeah. you just, it's just a lookup table. Because uh, a lot of the display deals in in, in Europe are DO focused, so yes. it would be on a CPC or CPA. So just to clarify, right? So this is this is the auction that we have. Uh, we have our sponsorship up here, which we basically would sold, and then the rest of it is all in an auction base. Yep. Yeah. So then the other bidders are DSPs or trading desks working through a DSP. Mm -hmm. Um, ad networks, it's essentially all demand. But what you have here is everyone has to bid back into the inventory and perhaps either 100% of the inventory is in the auction yeah. or, uh, you know, 100% minus whatever the percentage of sponsorship. So okay. if you do 10% sponsorship, then maybe you'll reserve that impressions, those impressions and, yeah. and, and not put those just, you know, cause they need to win anyway. Uh, so then you end up having 90% of the inventory. Yeah. You know, if if your sell through on this is 10% and your sell through on this is 30%, yeah. then you have this yield management problem of, okay, which 30% of the total impression pie should be going? Because okay. it's not just the first. So all of the bidders bid back in and you run an auction and decide the winners. And this bidder has a responsibility to both run these algorithms and execute pacing such mm -hmm. that if you're doing guarantees on the back of this mm -hmm. stuff that these things come through. But guess what? All the other GSPs and bidders have the same thing. Mm. So the technology is available. The difference is, is that it's a bidder working for your deals yeah. in the auction. So just to clarify, the bidder is uh, basically taking direct deals. So let's say, are we allowed to mention the publisher? Yeah. So there, are, there is a publisher called The Telegraph doing the this. Telegraph order. in the Netherlands. So your bidder is effectively taking your direct deals. So um, Martin Van der Meijer's little sales team are going out and getting deals from agencies and they've got their direct deals and they're basically executing this through their own publisher trading desk into an auction against all the other indirect buyers yep. in, in, in the auction. Is that correct? Exactly. And this has some benefits. One is that when the direct essentially bids, if you think of them as a bid, always mm. get first crack, yeah. you don't have full liquidity in your auction. Yeah. So what percentage of the time Going back to this, would the direct buys, had they been in the auction, have represented the second price? Mm. And it would have dro drove up the second price on the, uh, you know, when, when, when an indirect buyer wins. Yeah. You don't know that unless you model it or unless you, you execute this strategy. What about fulfilling orders? I mean, like, you know, the, 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 the fear for, from publishers is we have all this spend uh, to execute. Um, but how do we fulfill these orders? How, how, how do we make sure that, uh, that the direct buys here are executed on our auction. Well, how would you? Well, you need uh, good pacing algorithms and you need good forecasting algorithms because this is crucial because the job of this direct bidder is going to have sufficient forecasting and pacing algorithms so that um, if your inventory is tight mm -hmm. that you bid. And then you may want to make a bidder that fully supports deal ID okay. and choose an auction provider that supports deal ID so that you have this kind of First class connection. Would that, inventory would that gets tight my agents? <laughs> Any auction that yeah. supports deal ID would be sufficient from right. an academic sense. Okay. Of course, we believe ours ours has worked pretty well for for, uh, for uh, the television. And of course, you can the, the bidder can uh, can plug into other inventory sources and bid on that and uh, that inventory as well as well as as well as their own. So what's they could, the, but at that point, it's essentially the publisher trading desk uh, yeah. transitioning to be kind of a, a an ad network model, and both both models happen. But primarily what you're talking about is kind of a bidder bidding back into O and O inventory. Okay. So what's the what is the benefit? So people will say, that seems very complicated. Why why would you do this? Is it is it a case of improving yield optimization? I mean what's the benefits of so a publisher sitting there going, why would I build a bidder? Uh, when this is you know, this seems to be well, this is the proof the, the, the proven and tested model, you know? 
Well, the, uh, the Telegraph has proven that they've been able to increase yield like this precisely because anytime you have those curves overlapping to such a degree, you're leaving money on the table. And, you know, the, the easiest kind of... Uh, it's about revenue. <laughs> <It's not bad. laughs> uh, we'll just go with symbols. Yeah. That's Equations are built with symbols. Dollars and euros. <clears throat> so here's revenue. Yeah. Right? And you, you want to look at unique users per day yeah. that come into your into your site yeah. that go against your inventory times dollars per user. unique user. Yeah. So this is essentially the fundamental algorithm or the fundamental yeah. equation of yield. So what do we want to concentrate on? To make this number go up, you have to make either or both of these numbers go up. Yeah. This is supply, this is demand. Okay. If you make good content and you and you have engaged users, more users that come, Primarily, you make money on um, uh, in internet advertising because of the frequency cap. Mm. Most buyers are going on the frequency cap. Mm. If you've got a hundred thousand impressions, and you and you've got a, a large number of users looking at a relatively few amount of pages, you generally make more money than if you have a handful of users looking at mm. uh, a long page list because the price falls pretty quickly. You want to make sure you have maximal number of users per day, and you want to make sure you have the most orders against that against those that inventory. The more orders you put in the auction, the higher the second price goes, uh, and this number goes up. So your your the job of your sales team, more demand. The job of essentially the content creation team, get more users. Okay. So it's very simplistic, but it, it's different than looking at revenue as a function of CPM times. Volume. This is kind of what CPM times volume hides this aspect. You're not talking about like which volume. So how you, I mean, you collect, you're obviously uh, calculating users, uh, revenue per users, unique users from what you're actually earning in a day from you know various sources. Yep. So you want to track. You can track this metric, and we we track the, this metric in our systems, and we're working on prototypes to expose all this to to our publishers. You know, track what your what your unique users per, per day is, and essentially the average value of those users. Okay. And how many orders you have running in the system, bid density per impression. Um, we like to look at you know key metrics is uh, density per impression, uh, as well as essentially the difference between the first price and the second price. Mm. Or a little more robust one is the first price and the third price. Right. Okay. Right. Because if you if if you want if you manage your demand and essentially you seek to narrow the gap between the first and third price, it's pretty robust with respect to the second price option. So you think that th this model here would increase would increase yeah. bid density across the? Uh, the what well, increases bid density because your direct buyers are getting yeah. in the auction, and it will uh, essentially drive this metric down because your direct buyers are getting in the auction. Right, and obviously these people want access to this inventory because yep. it is the Telegraph inventory. And obviously, yeah. if you have a a, a bidder, uh, publisher bidder involved as well, it's going to increase price. Absolutely. The, I mean, an algorithm is a, a, an auction algorithm is a very simple creature, right? You put things in to sell, you get the most buyers possible, yeah. and you make the most money when you have the most bids. Okay, Neil, thanks very much. Appreciate that uh, overview of uh, of waterfall versus all in auction and. Uh, that was Trail Talk TV. Thanks very much.